Christ's holiness. This is our morning service today. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you standing in for Bishop Borden in his absence from the pulpit today. Uh, again, we say thank you for joining us. We're always delighted to have you with us uh, doing our streaming of our morning service. We believe God really has something wonderful in store for us today. Uh, the prepared message and the message in song and the praise and worship. We truly believe that you will certainly be blessed uh, for being with us today. There is always a blessing in the house of God. Amen. So all of you, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or you're on our teleconference line, we trust and believe that God has something special for you today. Uh, just uh, by way uh, of announcement, we will first, uh, before our announcement, we're going to have a praise and worship medley uh, at this time by our own uh, precious uh, Michael. Amen? Amen. Let us say amen as she prepares to come.
Amen. Thank you, Minister Precious. Amen. Uh, by way of our announcements this morning, uh, just uh, want to add uh, one birthday. You know, uh, October 23rd is Mother Ruby Ross's birthday, but we also learned on yesterday, young Javon Ransom, his uh, birthday is on October 23rd. We certainly want to give him a birthday shout out also. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, uh, before we prepare to go to a time of giving, we just want to remind you about the tithes and offerings. Uh, some of you we know that are giving your uh, tithes and offerings electronically, either through Zelle or through Venmo. And if you are or will begin to use one of those systems, remember it's BethelCOCH at gmail.com. If you're mailing your tithes and offering, uh, our post office box uh, whereby where we receive mail is P.O. Box 11664, uh, Los Angeles, California, 90011. So uh, just a reminder of uh, the tithes and offering. Amen. Certainly, uh, we want to thank all of the Bethelites who were able to come out on yesterday as we had the memorial service, the celebration of life for young sister Nina Dolores Ransom. We really appreciate Bethelites for you showing up and being a great support to the uh, Ransom board and family as they uh, memorialize uh, their beloved young uh, sister. Amen. So again, uh, Bethelites, thank you so very much for your love and support for the family. We want to uh, our pray for our sick and shut-in uh, on our list. Uh, we have uh, Sister Grace Wright, the mother of our First Lady, uh, Deaconess Correa Statton, Sister B. Johnson, uh, Mother Gladys McAvery, Sister Viola Swan. And we also have Pastor Curtis Smith. He's an a interim pastor at the Bethlehem Church, but he has been on our uh, sick list prayer list for some time. And also Deaconess Gladys Breckenridge of the Bethlehem Church. Uh, we want to continue to pray for them also. And we want to pray for our deacon, Deacon Andre Smith. Uh, he's home ill. Uh, we're praying for his full and complete recovery. Uh, we understand also our own uh, sister Precious Michael uh, is home. So we want to certainly pray for her. Uh, complete recovery and healing also. And we're mindful of all the families that have lost loved ones. We want to continue to lift them in prayer as we call the Warden uh, Ransom family out with their other families. The family, Brother Paul Harvey, the brother of Sister Angela Borden, who was laid to rest, I believe, uh, a week ago on the 9th, I believe it was, in Memphis. We certainly want to continue to lift up uh, uh, that family also, and all the many other families. There's so much, so much loss as we watch the news and hear the pandemic, hear about the pandemic and the toll that it's taking and continue to take. And all of the families in the morning we have these tragedies, these shootings, and all the violence that are taking lives, and all of these incidents, their loved loved ones who are left to mourn the passing or the untimely deaths uh, of their loved ones. So we want to pray for all of those and praying to a God that we know he's able. Uh, our God that we serve, he is more than enough and he meets us right at our point of need. So let us prepare to bow in humble submission to the almighty God. May most gracious Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We thank you for your goodness, grace, and for your mercy, and for all of your manifold blessings. Father, you're just a good God. We're just acknowledging you for who you are, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Holy One of Israel, the one and only true and living God, and besides you, there is none other. God, we lift your name up on high. God, we adore you. God, we're so grateful for everything you've done. And we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who came down out of glory to die on the cross, to die in our stead, that we might be made acceptable in your sight. 
So God, we thank you. The word says you demonstrated your love for us that even while we were sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. So again, we say thank you. God, those that names that we call, God, we're just praying that the ones that are on sick and shut-in lists, wherever they are, whether they're several homes or even a hospital room, God, we're praying and asking, let your healing, let your healing virtue flow. God, we know that you're able. You're able to heal, restore, and make every quit whole if it be your divine will. So again, Father, we just want to say thank you for those. And Father, we're praying for those that have suffered the loss of a loved one. God, we're praying that you be that God of comfort that we know that you are in the name of Jesus. God, meet them at their points of need. And you encourage us that we would comfort others with that same comfort whereby we ourselves have been comforted. So God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. God, we're also praying for our needs. God, there are things in our life that we need and we lack, but God, we know that you are a God of provision. God, we pray that you would meet needs, whatever that thing, may. if it's food on the table, Lord, whatever it is, if I need help with this or help with that, God, we're looking to you to provide because you, we know you are a God who provides. So again, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, God, we look to you. You are the source of our help. You are the source of our strength. So, Father, as we prepare to proceed in our service today, there may be things that we have not asked for in our petition, God, but, God, we know that you know, you see. God, we pray that you would grant them, grant them in the precious, majestic name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we say thank you. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 So we thank God for what he has done thus far. And, and we're trust and believe that there is a blessing. As we said earlier, there is a blessing in God's house. Amen. So at this time, we're going to come with our message and song. And we'll be going uh, right into the word, our message today is found in the Hallel Psalms, Psalm 113 through 118. That's the Hallel Psalms, Psalm 113 through 118. And our title of our message today is Day to Praise. Day to Praise. Amen. Minister Precious.
136 is also considered a Kalel psalm. Uh, the Hel Kalel psalms, as I said, verse uh, Psalm 113 through uh, Psalm 118, Kalel mean in Hebrew means to praise. Amen. So these are songs of praise. So before we begin, let us pray. God our Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to speak a word. Father, we pray that uh, move uh, these lips of clay by your spirit. Lord, the message that you so desire for your people, let me thus speak. God, have your way this time. Open the eyes and hearts of all the hearers. God, we know, as we said, there is a, a blessing in this house today. So again, we say thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So as, as I said, the word Alel means to praise uh, in Hebrew. Observant Jews uh, recite verbatim uh, these psalms as an act of praise and also an act of thanksgiving. Uh, these psalms, as does other scripture, uh, they encourage us to not only praise God for who he is, but also to give thanks for all of his many, many blessings that he restores upon us. Uh, we title our message after the Day to Praise Global Initiative 
that began in uh, two, uh, 20, 2015. And it says this, uh, Jewish Rabbi Shlomo Risky, he was named by the president or prime minister as of Israel as the ambassador for Jewish Christian relations. And he sent out an email to all of Israel's supporters all the way around the world and he invited uh, each of them to participate in, in an interface praise rally, is what he referred to it as. And this is where the Hillel Psalms uh, would be recited. Uh, Rabbi Riskin stated that God had placed Psalm 117 on his heart. And Psalms 117 reads, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endured forever. Praise ye the Lord. Yes, God is due praise from all the nations of the world. The day to praise has now become at an annual event, and I believe it's held toward the middle of uh, April. It varies from year to year. Uh, so it is a, a, an event. Now, you might ask the question of me, why the Hasleel Psalms? Uh, as we said, they are psalms of praise and thanksgiving. And why we use it as our text today, uh, let me just take a moment. Uh, it was confirmed to me a few days ago in a conversation with the pastor that, yes, indeed, that I had been asked or would be bringing the message today. I would be speaking. And I started uh, praying to God to, God, give, give me the message that you have for your people. That has been my prayer throughout my time as a minister, a preacher, asking God, leading and guiding and, and giving me what it is that he would have uh, me speak. So that was not unusual. So I'm, I'm praying, and usually, though, uh, when I pray that prayer, uh, whatever that thought is will pop into my mind or maybe it will be a scripture that God will just drop right into my spirit. And then I'm able to take that and, and then to uh, be able to use that text to bring, bring the message. Uh, but this time, it, it wasn't so. Uh, it turned out it was a not so pleasant dream. As we were in our uh, Sunday school study this morning, uh, God, who was scolding, so to speak, uh, Aaron and Miriam for coming against or criticizing uh, his leader, Moses, God speaking to them said, with prophets, I usually speak to them through visions and dreams. He even said, it's not so with my uh, servant Moses, with him. I, I speak mouth to mouth with him. So as I even was studying that this morning, I thought about the unusual dream that drew me to this text uh, there in the Hillel Psalms. And, and let me just, if I might just share, it's a not so pleasant dream, but I, I'll tell you why I knew and believe it was the word of, of me, God speaking this message to me and his message in terms of the text. So I'm getting off work, and uh, some of this is all vague, but I, there's the specifics that we'll get to. Somehow I'm on a bus riding home, and this bus somehow gets caught by a train going down a track, and we're patiently waiting, and the bus is just sitting there, and suddenly when the train leaves, the bus driver's about to take off, but he sees there's a road ahead un, under construction and it's blocked, so the bus cannot go anywhere. And I'm in the rear of the bus and I look, and there is this man standing right at the exit door. This would be a door such as it would be on a train car. He's standing there, and I hear the bus driver yell out, lock the close the doors and this man is standing inside he's just standing there by himself and suddenly he produces a handgun and i go uh oh he produces his handgun this man is a robber 
he approaches me. I know I have no money to give him, but when I produce my identification, my wallet, he sees my law enforcement credential. And that's what I feared the most, being in that position and unable to defend myself. And he asked me, was I in law enforcement? He says, yes. But then he saw I had no money. He just walked ahead to the next person's. And within a moment, there was a second man who was part of that robbery team. And as he was walking by me, having known that his partner had already talked with me, he looked at me and said, Halal Tex, Halal Tex. And I just dismissed it. And so they continued to rob the others, and I'm still standing there thinking the favor of God was with me because he protected me, knowing that here I'm so vulnerable and this enemy of this man knows that I'm in law enforcement. And this first man suddenly returns to me, and he begins to look down, where are the idols, he said, where are the idols? He's looking for idols, and I'm trying to explain, I don't have any idols. And the second robber comes upon him and says, no, no, uh, he has a hell te Hillel text, Hillel text. And the first robber, they both turned away from me, and that's when I was awakened. And I began to replay that dream just for a moment, and I realized that prayer, Lord, what's the message today? That message is the Hillel text, and that's what brings us to this place for this message today. Yes, the dream was not so pleasant. And as, as I said from the Sunday school lesson, God said he speaks to his prophets through dreams and vision. He didn't say pleasant dreams. And so I received that word. So we're here and I want to share what God has given me from these songs. Time will not allow us to go to every verse of each of these, but I just wanted to pull out just a few of those verses. Uh, here in Psalm 113, uh, the psalm writer, the psalmist, it's an exhortation to, to praise God. He, he says that uh, we know that God is worthy to be praised and to be adored. Verse 1 says, 1, 2, and 3, I should say, he says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Verse 2, blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. We are to glorify, to honor the name of the Lord and, and to lift him up. Amen. To lift him up. The whole universe is to give the Lord God praise. Verse 7 he raises up the poor out of the dust, and he lifted the needy out of the dung heap. Yes, he exalts his saints. I mean, he is, has a mindful eye on all of his children. He is attentive to our very needs. For As it said, for the poor, he lifts them out of the dust, and the needy, he lifts them out of the dung heap. He exalts our God. He he keeps his promises. He, he cares for all of us, the poor, the needy, all of us. And verse 9, he says, He maketh the bare women to keep house and to be joyful, to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Amen, somebody. You get that? He makes the barren woman. I, I was thinking of, of Elizabeth. Uh, the mother of John the Baptist, a barren old lady. And I was thinking about Hannah who was praying there and, and Eli saw and thought she was drunk, how she was barren, but, but God made them a fruitful woman. And, and we know that uh, God, uh, they, in Hannah's case, she had many, many other children. So he takes the barren woman and she makes her a joyful mother of many children. Praise the Lord. So the question, what are we to do, saints? We are to praise ye the Lord and give thanks to his name. Psalm 114, the exhortation is the fear or to give reverence to God. I, I read uh, 
uh, these, uh, pull these right out of the contemporary English version. The psalm writer, the psalmist, uh, he attempts to capture for us the awesomeness of God. Uh, God is to be reverenced, respected for his mighty acts and for who he is and everything that he had done to bring the nation of Israel out of captivity, uh, out of Egypt. Uh, verses 1, 2, and 3, uh, the contemporary English said, God brought his people out of Egypt, that land with a strange language. Verse 2, it said, he made Judah his holy place and rule over Israel. When the sea, it says, when the sea looked at God, it ran away and the Jordan River flowed up soon. Uh, the psalmist is, is capturing that. It says, we know from scripture when, when Moses and the children of Israel had their backs to the Red Sea and the approaching enemy army, the Pharaoh's army, and how God parted, it said, the Red Sea. And I just love how, how it said, parted the Red Sea and, and they, the nation, the children of Israel, walked through on dry ground. And the psalmist also is referring to the Jordan River uh, when they were about to cross over into the promised land. Joshua was the leader at this time. And they had instructions of how to cross the river. The, the priests were going to take the Ark of the Covenant and they were to step into the water and the rest would follow. Don't you know that when when the priest set foot into the water that the Jordan River stopped flowing, the water started to heap up, and they too were able to walk through the parted Jordan River, and they walked through on dry ground. You know who did that? The awesome God, the powerful God. There's nothing impossible for him. It says when the sea, when the sea looked at God, it ran away, and the Jordan River flowed upstream. Verse 5, ask the sea why it ran away, or ask the Jordan why it flowed upstream. Verse 7, earth you will tremble when the Lord God of Jacob comes near. God is awesome. He is to be feared. He is to be reverenced, respected. Amen, somebody. Verse 8, because he turned solid rock into flowing streams and pools of water. And in your mind's eye, going back out into the desert, uh, when, when God told Moses they were thirsty, God told him, said, strike the rock. And Moses was obedient, and he, he struck the rock, and rivers of fresh water began to flow. Amen. Because he turned solid rock into flowing streams and pools of water. When we read this psalm, we readily see the awesomeness of God. We see his mighty power. With the strong right hand, it said, he wrested his people from the hand of Pharaoh. Having been in captivity all those years, uh, being uh, suffering under the heavy burdens that had been placed upon them, God visited his people. And with his strong right hand, he took his people from the power and control of the Pharaoh. He delivered them through the midst of the Red Sea and across the Jordan River. As we said earlier, both on dry ground. The Red Sea and the Jordan River bowed, as it were, in humble submission to the Almighty God. What are we to do, saints? Praise ye the Lord and give thanks unto his name. Yes. Psalm 115 says, the psalm writer, psalmist, God entreated to assert his honor. The psalmist is, is pleading with God, God, make yourself known, assert, show your power. You are to be honored, loved and adored. Show yourself, that's the essence of of what the psalmist is writing about. And verse 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, it says, Glorify, this is the psalmist speaking to God, Glorify your name, not ours, O Lord. Cause everyone to praise your, your loving kindness and your truth. 
Why, he said, let the nation say their God is dead. For he is in the heavens, that is, God is in the heavens, and he does as he wishes. Their gods, speaking of idols of the nations, their gods are merely man-made things of silver and gold. God's name is great. The psalmist wants God to show who he is, his love, his abundant grace, to also let the nation know that he exists, that it is he alone that is all powerful, that man-made idols, they're nothing. They cannot talk, they cannot see, despite having eyes and mouths. They cannot hear, they cannot smell, they cannot use their hands or their feet. And verse 9 says this, O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is your helper, he is your shield. All of us are to put our trust in the Lord God. He is constantly thinking of us. He will surely, surely bless us. The question I keep asking, what are we to do, saints? Praise ye the Lord and give thanks unto his name. Psalm 116, the summit professes or expresses his love to God. Verse 1, 2, it says, I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplication, because he had inclined his ear unto me. Uh, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. God, uh, Isaiah says this, even before we call, God will answer. God, his ear is attentive to the calls of his children. Amen, somebody. And I can just relate that to uh, the, the mother there who's putting the baby down for the evening and returns to her own space, but no matter how drowsy, how sleepy that mom might be, she has an attentive ear for that baby. All that baby do, needs to do is just make one little sound one little thing, and mother hears that child. That's our Heavenly Father. He's waiting to hear his children call for him. Yes. He has inclined his ear unto us. Verse 5, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. We serve a gracious God. Yes. New mercies, grace that he extends freely to us morning by morning great is his faithfulness and righteousness and merciful amen somebody god is is a merciful god amen we have all fallen short come short and we've all messed up but thank god for his mercy amen giving me not what i deserve but amen but keeping me in his precious love God is merciful. Verse 12, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? That's a question. Let a man examine himself. The goodness of God toward us, the many, many blessings he has bestowed and he continues to bestow upon us. What shall we render unto the Lord for all of these benefits? We should, should devote ourselves to, ourselves to him wholeheartedly and be obedient to whatever he has called us to in the name of Jesus. We thank him. And verse 14, verse 17, it says, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. God, as we said, has blessed us so. We are to express our gratitude for what he has done for us. And as I say often that if he never blesses us in any way ever again, he has already, he has already blessed us beyond measures. 
So what are we to do, saints? Praise ye the Lord and give thanks unto his name. Yes. Psalm 117, the psalm that was laid on the heart of Rabbi Rizki for this uh, bringing this uh, day to praise to be exhortation uh, to nations to praise God. Psalm 17 says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of God endure forever. Praise ye the Lord. God is over the nations. Governments are ordained by him. He establishes nations and he brings down nations according to his own divine will. He, God, is merciful and he is kind. So what are we to do, saints? Praise ye the Lord and give thanks to his name. Amen, somebody. And Psalm 118, the psalmist is exhorting us to praise God for his mercy. Amen. For his mercy. These verses 1 through 5. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Verse 2, let Israel now say that his mercy endure forever. 3, let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endure forever. Let them now that fear the Lord, that's us say, let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. Verse 5, I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me, it says, in a large place. The Lord is merciful, and he has the power to deliver. The Lord says, the, the son's brother says, the Lord is on my side, and I won't be afraid. What can man do to me? And verse 28 and 29, the son is right. Thou art my God. And I will praise thee. Thou art my God. I will exalt you. We are to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. He is worthy of honor. He is worthy of all the praise. At verse 29. Oh give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. He's a merciful God. And, in, and that says let me hit his net mercy never runs out. Amen, somebody. It, it never runs out. It, it's forever. God loves his children. Amen. Yes, he'll chastise us when he needs to. He'll whip us, whatever. But he loves us. Amen. And I heard a preacher say that he doesn't beat up the devil's children. Amen. He chastises his own. Amen. Amen. What are we to do, saints? Praise ye the Lord and give thanks to his name. Yes. You know, when the storms are in your life are raging, God is ever present. I, I was just want to share, share this. My wife and I in July took one of our vehicles and we drove it to Texas. Uh, it was in great tip-top shape. And on the way home, uh, 100 miles from Houston, 1,400 miles from home, it started to misfire. Caddy looked at it, diagnosed it. We even got a part we thought that was needed. And, and uh, but because it would take us overnight, I had made a decision, which ultimately was a poor decision, we'll just drive it home, it'll make it. Well, we drove that truck uh, 1,390 miles, 10 miles from home when the truck just gave up on us. But you know what? As, as tough as that was, thinking about breaking down on the 210 freeway, but I got to thinking, look how good God is. 
It, this old truck has brought us 1,400 miles and 1,390 miles and brought us literally all the way home. Amen, somebody. So in the midst of that bad experience, I'm praising God for how good he is to get us that, get us literally back home. Well, that's not the only car experience and talking about the grace and goodness of God. Coming into the church just this past Thursday, my wife and I, there was a couple of things that I wanted to make sure was done. And just about a couple of miles from the church, our car started to misfire, the same problem that the truck had. And so we make it here to the church and park the car. And I called Pastor Ortega. I called him actually before we actually got here to tell him what we were experiencing. And he was not available. So I'm thinking even while here at the church, how am I gonna get this car home without damaging it further? Well, don't you know that God is already working ahead of me? After calling Pastor Ortega, he's not available, but he called Brother Chewy Delgado, another mechanic. And within about 15, 30 minutes, Brother Delgado was here in the parking lot, diagnosed our car, and told us what was needed to fix it. And I would say within two hours, he had fixed that car like new. And we drove away from this church praising God. Amen. In, in the midst of this, oh no, we've got another problem. But God already saw the solution and he sent the man to fix it. God gives his children favor. Amen. So even in the storms of life, that's a light thing. Amen. But God works in small things too. Amen. So I just want to encourage you this morning. When, when the storms of life or uh, when the storms were the raging in your life, God is ever present. Just know that. He's not gone somewhere. He's not not paying attention. For us, his children, he has his ear inclined to hear our very call. Uh, just know that God loves us. He is faithful. He is a covenant-keeping God. His promises are yes and amen. He promises to not ever leave us, he said, or forsake us. So when you're in your darkest midnight hour, amen, somebody. Somebody know about that, amen. When you're in your darkest midnight hour, just call on his name and just begin to praise him. Praise through it. I, I, what the songwriter said, praise is what we do or what I do. Just praise him anyhow in the midst of disappointments. Just praise him through. Praise through this. Amen. Amen. He is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. And while we're praising him, offer up to him the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Amen. God is so good. But I just believe that he just loves to hear his children when they say, God, I thank you. Mm, mm. I, I didn't know how I was going to make it through, but God, you made a way. I, I got through it. It's because of you. I believe he just loves to hear us just say thank you. When we just say thank you. So the sacrifice of thanksgiving for the marvelous things that he's already done in our life. Yes, he has blessed us beyond measure. Regardless of our circumstances, God, I'm going to praise you anyhow and give thanks unto your name. Food, I may, I may not have food for my uh, table today, but God, I thank you for the food yesterday. Amen, somebody. I'm going to praise you. Father, I was able to make this month's rent but I don't know about next month, but I'm going to keep on praising you anyhow and thanking you for all the other times when I was able to make that red paint. God, I, I know my children, oh glory, I know my children are messing up, but God, I thank you for keeping them covered under the blood of the Lamb. Father, I'm ailing in my body. Went down to the doctor, not me, but I've been there. Some of you have already been there. And the doctor, when you look for the prognosis, he's not giving you much hope. He's not giving you much hope. There's nothing positive. I'm ailing in my body, but 
and the doctor does not give me much hope, but I'm going to keep on praising you and believing. I believe, oh, glory. I believe in for a miracle. God, I know that you're able. I'm believing that you're able to forgive this miracle if it be your divine will. I want to encourage you. Praise God. Praise him. Praise him through your, as we said, through your midnights. It's so easy. And we've talked about it before, having those mountaintop experiences. When everything is going well, oh, we can we can have a hallelujah good time. Yes, we can praise day and night for the good things. But when the bad things begin to happen, we've got to keep on praise. He's the same God. He He's deserving of honor. He's deserving of praise. But we've got to, oh, glory, we've got to keep on praising. <laughs> we've got to keep on praising because he is able. He is more than enough. He is our peace. He is everything that we need. I want to encourage you today. Look up. Look up. In the name of Jesus. Let us keep praising through our trials and our tribulation. Let us keep on thanking him for what he has already done. What are we to do, saints? Praise ye the Lord and give thanks to his holy name. God, we thank you today. We thank you for your words of encouragement. God, yes, we're going to keep praising we're going to keep blessing your name. We're going to be, keep giving thanks for all the many, many blessings that you have bestowed. You are a good God, and you're good all the time. You're worthy of all the honor, and you're worthy of all the praise. We thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Someone may have heard this message today, and they have heard the word of the Lord and the Spirit speaking through them about relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. This will be an opportunity for you today. The Holy Spirit says it this way, today when you hear my voice, harden not your heart as they did in the day of provocations. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day of salvation for you. If you're under the sound of my voice and you have never ever said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is your opportunity to do so. God loves you. He gave the very best that he had, his only begotten son. He made him to be sin for us. And what Jesus did for us by dying on the cross, being buried and now resurrected, he through his work, has made us acceptable to God. So what do you have to do? Is just open your heart and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to lead you in just a moment in a, in a little short prayer. And if you pray this prayer out of a sincere heart, you would have that very petition that you requested. Let us pray. Pray after me. Lord Jesus, I come now as humbly as I know how. I know that I'm a sin sinner. I confess my sin unto you. I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart. Fill me and make me brand new. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I ask it in your precious name. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer out of a sincere heart, you have that very petition that you have requested, the gift of eternal life that comes only through the Lord Jesus Christ. I would just encourage you, as our pastor always does, uh, find a friend, someone that you know is a born-again believer, and let them know that you just committed your life, life to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and let them help you. And also, search out a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church and park yourself and join and learn and be nourished in the word of God. God bless you today. We hope and pray that something said or done 
will bless your heart today. Keep on praising. Keep on praising. God continues to bless and be the God that meets needs in our lives. Again, God bless you. God, thank you. That is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.